Hey, listen, church, we have a huge problem when it comes to faith and finances. Amen. Yes. It seems as if we sit in one of two extremes. Either we're in the camp that all church leaders and churches are greedy and therefore we never talk about finances, or we're in the other extreme of health and wealth and we're just waiting for a big semi truck of cash to pull up to our house and dump it off. And that God had to open up the windows of heaven and pull me out a blessing. What? Now I know these are more of caricatures of the church, but listen, we have to find a happy medium. We need to find that healthy space to talk about money and its deep connection to our faith. So stick with me today and I'll show you the simplest answer to the faith and finance problem on Church Door. Can I just say, I'm not even talking about money in the church, but I'm talking money in general. We stink at handling it. Oh, well, you don't believe me? Well, just look at the person beside you because nearly half of every American has an average of $6,864 in credit card debt. And that's not to mention our growing national debt. We have this ever-growing number that looks like this. Seriously, this thing never stops and it's quickly rushing to $35 trillion. You see, and that equates to $102,804 in debt for each and every American. Case and point, we are horrible with money. Mm, it's awful. I mean, heaven's sakes, listen, money doesn't grow on trees and nothing in this life is truly free. You know, I remember the first time that I was hit with this stark reality. I was probably about 10 years old. I was quickly growing out of that fire engine red BMX bike and really, really wanted a mountain bike like my other friends were riding. So I did what any other 10 year old would do. And I went to the one person that I knew had money, my dad. Money, please. I casually slipped into a conversation one morning and said, you know what? I think I'm getting too big for my bike, dad. I, I think I might need a new one. Well, he kind of laughed and replied by saying, well, how do you think you're gonna get that? And in my innocence and naivety, I said, well, I thought you might buy me one. He quickly came back with, son, sounds like you need to get a job. As a kid, I was failing to make that connection that money had to be earned. It didn't just magically appear in my dad's wallet. The truth also applies for all of us when it comes to faith and finance. We fail to make the connection that our finances are a spiritual issue. No matter how much we want to deny it, this is just the simple truth. If you can't trust God with the finances he has given you to steward, what makes you think that you'll trust him with everything else in your life? I don't know. We have somehow put our finances into another category, maybe a lesser item of spiritual concern than other things. Well, God is more concerned about my family issues than he is my finances. I mean, I've got that financial stuff all under control anyway. But I think this is just the problem. We think we have it under control. We've set up our lives in such a way that we don't have to rely on the sufficiency of God. We've ultimately traded God's sufficiency for our sufficiency, providing for ourselves. That's why I'm calling today's message the simplest answer to the faith and finance problem. Listen, if we don't get this right, the pitfalls are endless and none of us are immune to falling into them. There is greed. Our appetite for more is insatious. Listen, if you have it in the back of your mind that, well, if I can just make this much, then I'll be generous. Nope, listen, it ain't gonna happen. And if we don't learn to put our greedy appetite to the side, it will never be satisfied. Then there's idolatry. We make money our God. We don't need God to provide because we just keep chasing that green. And then there's pride, our need to be better than the next person, to have more power, to buy better stuff, to keep up with the Joneses. And bitterness, because if we don't have enough, maybe we're mad at God for holding out on us. Do you see any connection in all these things? Yes, they are sins. Not just things God doesn't like and gives you the side eye or slaps you on the hand for it. No, this is sin. And sin disconnects us from God and other people in our life. So what is the simplest answer to this problem? Well, I think it's this. Approach finances with a fruits 
first. Strike that. Reverse it. This way, please. Mentality. In other words, when it comes to our money and all that God gives us to steward, we say, I'll first give back to God in honor of his provision. In 1 Kings 17, because of the sins of the king of Israel, God's people were being devastated by a three-year drought. And Elijah, a prophet of God, was called to come out of hiding to a place called Zarephath. And this word in Hebrew is synonymous with a metal forge. So as we approach these verses, we see that God is bringing Elijah out of hiding and into the forge to purify his understanding of who God is even in the midst of hardship. Let's see what the scripture says. Here's verse 10. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me please a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as I have said, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me and then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jar of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah had told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and for her family. For the jar of flour was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry. In keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Now, I don't know about you, but there are times in my life that I can identify with this woman times when it was a major drought and I looked towards the end of it and thought, it was this the end for me? I mean, for heaven's sakes, she was going home to make her last meal and then starved to death. But here comes Elijah, a prophet on behalf of God saying, give me some bread first. Many have been in this place. Things are deadly tight and we think, you know, I'm just gonna keep it for myself because I can see the end and it's not good. Or so we think. Yet Elijah said, don't be afraid because when you bring to God first his portion, you will have more than you need. And seriously, she went from thinking that things were all over to now seeing that things were overflowing. The scripture says that she fed Elijah, herself, and her whole family, not just her son, until the drought was over. This is amazing. We see this all throughout scripture. Even Jesus reminds us in Luke 16, 10, whoever is faithful with very little will also be faithful with much. And whoever is dishonest with little will also be dishonest with much. So if you've not been faithful with worldly wealth, who will entrust you with true riches? It's all a matter of priority. And when we purpose to trust God with our first fruits, not our leftovers or even worse, nothing at all, but our first fruits, he entrusts us with true riches from heaven. If you're here watching this video today and you're truly struggling with faith and finances, we have a team of people here that wanna walk you through this season in your life. You can reach out to us in the chat box below or you can text prayer to the number that you see coming up on the screen right now. Do us a quick favor and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's gonna come right to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent that comes back in goes right back out to help people just like you take their next step with Jesus. We pray blessings on you that as you give God your first fruits, that he will do everything that he has promised to do. And you will see it and praise him and honor him for it. Hey, let's keep this party going. Go ahead and click that button in the center of your screen. Got another video that we think you'll like. 